Dr. Peter Stapleton here, Clinical and Health Registered Psychologist here in Australia. And as an Associate Professor in the School of Psychology at one of our local universities here in Queensland, I am known for my research in the area of EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques, or tapping as it's commonly called. So likened to an emotional or psychological version of acupuncture, we stimulate pressure points that are on the body uh, through a stress reduction technique and process in order to obviously calm the body as well as the mind. So I have researched this technique now for over 10 years in areas such as depression, food cravings and chronic pain. And this research spotlight series really does outline where is the research at, what is the evidence for a technique such as EFT or tapping. So this one today particularly focuses on the research that has been done in the area of post-traumatic stress disorder. Now whilst there's over 120 publications in the area of EFT in general, and many of them do target through whatever they're actually focusing on in a trial, symptoms of psychological distress or even trauma, I just want to talk today about some of the landmark studies because there actually have been many, many studies that have been done on PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder or trauma in general. So we'll just talk today about some of them and the references are in the notes below if you want to explore a little bit further. Now one of the very first studies that was ever done on EFT or tapping was done by Dr. Dawson Church in America and he looked at 11 returning war veterans and their families who attended a five-day workshop to obviously learn EFT. They obviously had uh, met criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder and after the five days of learning EFT in particular, they actually found that no one was in the clinical range uh, after that just for those symptoms. This did hold over time as well. So at one month, three month and certainly 12 month follow up, they found that uh, the people were still benefiting from the gains that they made. So that was good news. Now there's been lots of other studies that have actually been done so I want to talk about the range I guess and how many sessions that really it does take to, to achieve some of these outcomes. Most gold standard treatments will talk about 12 to 18 being a minimum number of sessions but most of the EFT research for post-traumatic stress disorder is indicating between 1 and 10 hour sessions is certainly enough for criteria not to be met anymore and for those gains to be maintained over time. So let's talk about some of those just a little bit. So a six hour treatment program that was delivered for again people with PTSD um, was a random trial. So people were allocated either into an EFT treatment or standard care. So that was care they were typically involved in anyway. So there were 30 adults that were in the EFT or tapping group and then 29 who were going through just standard care. And the EFT group uh, were able to go through a six week, six hour EFT tapping program for their post-traumatic stress symptoms. So after that six hour program, they found that um, there was a significant reduction in distress, psychological distress and post-traumatic stress uh, symptoms and disorder. Now what was interesting is at the end of that six hours, 90% uh, of the EFT people no longer met criteria. They were in, not in the clinical range, but only 4% of the same length of duration of people that were in standard care for PTSD treatment no longer met any clinical range or criteria. So three months later of that 90%, 86% that had gone through the EFT still no longer met and six months so at the six month mark, 80%. Uh, so there was only a reduction there of 10%. And again, the standard care people uh, were still the same. So that was good news, uh, six hours worth of treatment there. Uh, so anywhere between one and 10 sessions is often indicated. Now another study that was done of 218 war vets and their spouses. So we know now that spouses are often affected, uh, obviously with their partners who come back from war. And so this particular retreat was held over a week and it was designed to teach EFT to these participants as well as some other energy psychology techniques. So they received a four hour EFT session, which was a group delivery, and then three individual one hour sessions. So the spouses were involved as well, and this was obviously over that week. So only 28% at the end of that week of the war vets actually met any criteria. So the rest of them no longer, they were in the non-clinical range. And they did find that six weeks later they'd maintained those gains. 
Now, what was interesting is, and not necessarily targeted, but spouses improved. So at the beginning of the retreat, 29% of spouses also met criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder. And at the end of that, only 4% did. And again, they maintained their gains that six weeks later. So again, another really important area where EFT may actually benefit and help families uh, that are wrapped around and supporting the person that actually perhaps is in care. So EFT for post-traumatic stress disorder has actually also been investigated as to the type of delivery. So normally we would consider that face-to-face -face delivery a, a most standard option. So they have actually compared in-person, uh, turning up in-person face-to-face to telephone delivery of EFT for post-traumatic stress disorder. And whilst both of them did have a positive outcome, we saw significant reductions, of course, in things like psychological distress, PTSD symptoms, it's the difference in time delivery that in person it only takes three sessions to achieve those outcomes and telephone delivery took six sessions when it was compared. So again, still not a lengthy amount of time to get those gains, but just interesting to have a look at type of delivery there. EFT has been compared to EMDR, the Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing Therapy, which is now an approved therapy in America and certainly here in Australia for post-traumatic stress disorder. So it has been compared to that as well as cognitive behavioral therapy. And both studies have shown that EFT is comparable. So at a statistical level, what that means is they both achieve the outcomes or both treatments achieve the outcomes, which then means we get to call EFT or tapping a non in inferior treatment so it's certainly achieving the same uh, outcomes as gold standards that are already out there. Now a study that has recently come out in the last year or so has actually looked at the physiological effects of EFT for post-traumatic stress disorder and it is a landmark study that has been done. So 16 returning war vets actually underwent a 10 hour EFT over 10 weeks treatment program for post-traumatic stress disorder. But in that particular study, they actually measured physiological outcomes and changes, in particular DNA expression, uh, gene expression. So they did find after that 10 hours for those 16 men that there was actually a differential expression. So genes that were upregulated or expressing themselves to do with the stress response, what we see in post-traumatic stress disorder, were actually down-regulated, deregulated, so no longer expressing themselves. So to see something like that, that EFT uh, beyond just a stress reduction tool or technique perhaps that makes one feel better, it actually has a physiological outcome. We've certainly seen, and there's another Research Spotlight series here, video on uh, the EFT stress anxiety outcome study. So cortisol has certainly been measured in many, many studies of tapping and obviously shows an outcome. Uh, so to see that at a DNA or gene expression level is very exciting. And certainly when you look at the meta-analysis for uh, this particular area of PTSD, meaning looking at data available from many, many studies so that we can analyse it as one group, to look to see whether or not we can see what the effect size is. Uh, does EFT have such an impact that the difference is noticeable to the naked eye so that you would be able to tell that somebody's symptoms certainly had remitted or weren't there? Does it last over time and that you can notice it as well? And how does that compare perhaps to other treatments out there? So the meta-analysis of PTSD and EFT, and normally for an effect size, we look between the numbers of 0 to 1. So the higher a number is, so 0 0.8, we would consider that a very large effect size, a large effect size, because it's close to 1, meaning you would notice the difference in that person sitting in front of you. And indeed, the outcomes that they've achieved would have to be considered to be due to the treatment. So less likely to be due to chance, the higher that number is and closer to one. Obviously an effect size of 0 0.2, closer to zero, that would mean there's a small effect size, but it's really hard to see with the naked eye. Uh, there probably is something happening due to treatment, but really got to drill down in the data to notice that. So obviously zero to one, that's what we're looking for. Now the effect size, and I teach uh, obviously in a master's program of clinical psychology here in Australia, and I teach all of the mainstream and standard therapies that are out there. And 
have never really seen an effect size like what EFT was able to produce for post-traumatic stress disorder. And the effect size of this study was 2.96 of this meta-analysis. So certainly well and truly above the number one, 2.96, showing that indeed you as a lay person even would be able to notice the differences and that absolutely we could attribute those to the effects of EFT as an intervention for that particular person. So 2.96. Do have a look at the other Research Spotlight meta-analysis video because it does talk about the other meta-analysis that have been done for anxiety and depression and certainly for other versions of tapping as well. Now, if anyone is interested in America and hopefully within Australia within time, there is a veteran stress project where practitioners who are trained in EFT do offer EFT at either a very low cost or no cost whatsoever to returning war veterans. So if they do want to learn EFT for this particular area, post-traumatic stress disorder, and want to uh, certainly address those symptoms, I would absolutely recommend people visit Stress Project org so the website is below as well and certainly register yourself there to be um, teamed up with a practitioner that might be able to help so again something I hope that we might see across the world within time so I hope this is sort of just outlined there's certainly a lot of other uh, trials that have actually investigated symptoms of PTSD within other types of conditions but at least to give you a bit of a picture about the research that is out there uh, and certainly progressing in this field I would absolutely consider EFT or tapping for post-traumatic stress disorder if that was available to you in your area. I'm Dr Peter Stapleton I hope this has been useful and I look forward to sharing some more research spotlights soon.